So, look, I don't know why I have a YouTube channel. Frankly, I'm just posting stuff at random whenever I feel like it, so... <sighs> Welcome to our relationship, I guess. Rigging the Sonic Eye rig thingamajig, whatever. I have a new rig coming out. Her name is Vice. This is her. And uh, some people are wondering how I did the eye rig, so we're going to take a look at that. First, let me show you what the rig can do. You can move the eye, obviously, but you can also move the little gloss spot on it, and then you can change the shape of the eye. You can even change the shape of the iris. Ooh, you can rotate it. Oh my god. So you're probably over there going, what? How? How? And so I'm here to share my knowledge with you. I don't know why I said it that way. It was weird. Let's just make a new scene. All right, let's get the ball rolling. Create yourself a plane, name it I, because this will be our I geometry, and then create an armature, and this is going to be our basic control rig. By the way, I'm assuming that you know your way around Blender a little bit because this is an intermediate to advanced thing that I'm teaching here, so I'm not going to be explaining every little step of the process, just the core concept of how to put it together. So taking a look at the setup here, you have two bones. One is the main control, the other one is the pupil. They're both aligned to the world's y-axis, and the pupil is parented to the main control with offset, and that's the entirety of our rig. Now pull up an instance of the shader editor, and assign a new material to the eye. You can name it whatever you want, in my case eye matte, and then we can start playing with it. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to convert this principled shader into a diffuse. Uh, this is going to be our sclera. And we're going to duplicate that and create the following nodes. A texture gradient texture node set to spherical, a converter color ramp, a vector mapping set to texture mode, and an input texture coordinates node. A quicker way to do this, by the way, is if you have the node wrangler on, which you should, is to select the gradient texture and press Control T. Uh, from here, you'll want to make the following connections. From the texture coordinates, connect the UV to the mapping vector, mapping to gradient, gradient to ramp, and ramp to diffuse. Finally, in your 3D view, change the rendering mode to material preview. Et voila, a gradient. But it's not centered, so it's like, what the heck is going on around here, right? Well, if you pull up the UV editor, you can determine that the gradient starts from the origin of texture space, which is this lower left corner. Which means that if you grab this UV right here and pull it, you can totally make a butt. You can totally make a butt. Make a butt. In our shader view, let's find our little mapping node and change the X and Y axes from 0 to 0 0.5, and boom, it's centered on our plane. Anyway, you can use the X and Y scale dials to shape it any way you want. Uh, sonic eyes are ellipses, so that's what we're going for here. And then over on the color ramp, we're going to drag the sliders around until we get a nice crisp delineation. I'm going to make some room here so I can make more things. And then we're going to make another color ramp, which will be plugged directly into the diffuse node. From here, we'll want to actually combine the two diffuse nodes. So use a shader mix shader to do that. Connect both of those diffuse nodes to it, and then hook up the color ramp to the factor. This isolates the iris from the sclera, but it's kind of backwards right now, so you can either invert the colors of the ramp manually, or use a color invert node to get the same effect. And now you can tweak the colors of the new ramp to match whatever character you're trying to make. It can be brown, it can be blue, it can be violet sky, it can be earth, but it can be purple, it can be anything you like. And of course, once you get it the way you like it, you can use the X and Y dials over here to move it around, which is sick. We're still missing the pupil though, so let's work on that. Get a new color ramp going and create a color mix RGB node. Hook up your iris color to the first slot and then make the second slot black. Make sure the new ramp is black and white, and then hook that up to the factor and adjust it so that you get a pupil happening. Yay. Okay, so this next part is not going to make a ton of sense right away, but I promise it'll click when we start setting up the rig. So bear with me for a sec, and everything will become clear. Duplicate your mapping and gradient nodes and connect them to your pupil ramp. This separates the pupil completely from the iris. Why? Because now we can independently control the shape of the pupil which means you can refine it so the iris isn't completely uniform. This does make it so you can move it around independently and stuff, which is weird, but that's not going to be an issue, I promise. At this point, take a sec to refine the look of your eye, and then we can jump into making controls. 
For visual simplicity, I'm going to mute the gradient and mix notes so we're left with just the iris and I'm going to pin this so this stays on screen even when we select something else in the 3D view. Go into your armature's pose mode and pull up a new area with the driver's editor. What we want from this is to have the bone's X location to control the mapping node's X value. A quick way to do this is to right click the location X with the bone selected and pick copy as new driver. Then on the mapping node, right click the X location and choose paste driver. Whoops, thanks snap to the left border. Why did it do that? I don't know. Actually I do. The mapping node's X location is now bound to be equal to the bone's X location, but we don't want that. What we want is the bone's zero location to be equal to 0 0.5 of the mapping node so it's in the center. To get that, we have to edit the driver. But in order to see the driver, we have to select the plane. And jumping in and out of pose mode is a drag, so do yourself a favor, go to edit and uncheck lock object nodes. Now you can click between your plane and your armature's pose mode without having to manually switch modes all the time. With the plane and its mapping node selected, you can finally see your driver, oh my gosh. Take a look at the information in the driver's tab, and under path, you'll see some code that you can interpret as bone, main eyes, location, zero is being used. That zero tells Blender to use the bone's x-axis. Y is one and z is two. So far so good. Let's fix our little issue now. While hovering over the driver's editor, press the A key followed by the numpad period to zoom in on where the keys are. Select that first key, and then on the F curve tab, set its value to 0 0.5, and whoa, it's like working now, dude! I... So, back in the shader view, you'll notice that the mapping node's X location is now purple, meaning it's being controlled by a driver. So, right-click that, copy driver, and then go to the pupil's mapping node, and then right-click its X location, and then paste the driver on there. If you unmute those nodes from earlier, now you'll see that they're moving together. Yay! Now let's do the Y axis. Since you already have the driver copied, you can just right click the Y location and paste the driver. If you go back into the driver's editor, hide everything that you don't need, you can change the path so that it reads location 1 and boom, now you have full control of the thing. But the pupil is being left behind, so just copy the driver to the Y location, same as before. From here, everything else is kind of optional. If you want to control the pupil shape, it's basically the same thing. Make note of the current values on the X and Y scale, select the pupil bone, right click the X location dial, copy as new driver, and paste it into the mapping node's X scale. Go into the driver, select the first key, and set its value to, in our case, 0.06. Copy that driver into the Y slot, set its first key's values to 0.19, and its control path to location 1. And that's it, really. If you want, you can do the same thing for the iris, just make a new bone and use it as a control to drive the iris x and y scale values, and here's the way you do it. It's the same thing as before. And finally, you can set up the rotation in exactly the same way. Just make sure you copy the driver from the Z rotation channel instead of the X location like you have been doing, and you're good to go. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward setup, and you can do a lot with it um, with nothing else to say. I'm a peace out. In case I don't see ya, good morning, good evening, and good night.